Hello Internet, welcome back to Azel's TV. My god, it's been a week already. Well, here is part 10 of my wooden clock build. Let's get right into it. Okay, let's jump straight into part 10 of the build with some electronic goodness. Now, this looks like a complicated array of parts, but be not alarmed. Because I'll go through all of it bit by bit and show you what I'm up to here. Now, these are the servos I'm going to be using to test the circuit I make. But I only need one for now, so let's say that one. It's got a full 180 degree sweep, which I need. I don't need all the range, but it'll be enough for testing it. This looks arguably the most complex part of all, but this is just the battery pack, that's it. I mean, you've got a lithium iron, iron polymer ba battery. We've got the charge circuit here. We've got a step up voltage um, circuit for driving all the, the processor and everything else. So that's one single bit and that's, that's fairly easy. I mean, I'll, I'll take all this apart and use bits from it, but that, that won't be for a while. Now this is going to be the microcontroller, what I'll use for initially testing and programming. Let's get all these off of here. This is just a prototyping board. And this slots into here. I can very generally ease it out. There we go. That plugs into USB and into the computer. And I can program that and I can plug everything else into it. This is a circuit board I'm going to mount everything onto. That's more than enough room. Doesn't look like it, but that's plenty big enough. Nice red colour. This is the microcontroller I'll ultimately use. Now this has no USB on it, it doesn't have anything. So I'll be using this one to program this one. And I've got this to use for other projects or for programming other controllers like these, if I need to use these for anything. This will be the USB socket, which I'll use for powering the clock when it's all built, and it'll also charge the battery that's gonna get a backup, backup battery and everything else. I've got this crystal here, which is 20 megahertz, I'm not sure the speed of this one. I think this is 16 megahertz, really see, I think it's 16. So one of those will work with that. And then we've just got an indicator, LED. Nice and easy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is program this with a simple program called a sketch. And I'll get this to move back and forth. And I'll also add a potentiometer so I can turn a potentiometer and this moves around its swoop values. And I'll use that for testing the full range numerically later on. Okay, so I have this diagram of the microcontroller, which I've put in here, and I've already put a few pins in place. And it looks a bit alarming, but it's fairly simple when you break it down. All these colours mean different things depending on the context. For example, the red ones are power input, um, the black ones, of which are two, those ground pins. Uh, we've got control pins which are the reset lines there and so on and so on so for the time being I'm just going to connect the 5 volt in and the two ground pins and I've done that and that is there let's bring it in a bit closer here we go so that's the ground pin there and that one there and this is the 5 volt in Next thing I'm going to add to the breadboard is the potentiometer for adjusting the servo position for initial testing and that will connect to one of the input pins. Which are here, analog input. Right, that's analog pin zero is one, two, three, four, four. One of these perhaps. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Let's push that there. 
Now before I go any further, let's test this to make sure I've got all the connections correct for the power. I'm going to use my previously, previously built uh, USB power bank. So let's stick this in here. Switch it on. Mm. I've got a power meter here which will tell me how much current it's drawing, if any. There we go, it all lights up. That's good. That's a good sign. Nothing's letting the smoke out or catching fire. That's always good. Okay. Almost no power at all because, of course, I've not attached any peripherals or anything to it. I think it's got a program running which I had on there before, but it's not doing anything because nothing's attached yet. Next, I'll be attaching this and then the servo. And I go in there like that. Okay, well, that wasn't too bad. I've got the potential motor wired up to analog pin zero so the trace from the potential motor goes through the orange wire over this link through this red wire into that pin there and the servo is attached to digital pin 9 I believe and that's powered by this wire here and this wire here through all these connections and then the signal for the servo goes through this orange wire out of this pin here now if I plug all this in and turn it on it will either go crazy because I've got an old program in this already for something else or it'll do nothing at all I guess we'll find out nothing at all, okay current draw is nothing at all if I move this well, there's no signal going into this so it's not locked to a position so I can do this and move the servo and it's not trying to maintain a position when I have the program running properly and it's installed in this it will try and move to a position and then stay there next step will be to program the microcontroller right that is the microcontroller programmed hopefully that will work I've had some sustenance so now let's plug all this back in and see if it works I've unplugged this while I programmed it because what will happen is because I've done this before but it was a good few years ago the server will kick and it will draw too much power for the computer to power it and it shuts down the microcontroller which means it reboots and it doesn't load the program properly so it essentially crashes once it's all on its own and it's battery powered and everything else you can do what you want with it but when it's in the computer it causes problems so now I can plug it back in. I can actually make sure I've got the pin out correct. Uh, that one, good. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's there. Yes. Okay. And let's plug this into here. Okay, that kicks more than it did before. That's a good sign. Oh, and it's not working. Okay, let's find out why that is. Okay, rookie mistake. I've had a probe around. The pin that's full from the end here, which is analog pin zero, is definitely the one I want. Because if I, if I hold the pin like this. I'll get on a serial monitor, the, um, the debug terminal for the Arduino IDE, lots and lots of numbers, which seems to be main interference entering this, so it's picking something up, so that's the one I want. If I attach it to this potentiometer, it just clamps to zero and nothing happens. What I need to do, silly mistake, I've done this before actually, I need to connect the, pow the power and ground lines here to the power and ground lines here, these aren't connected. So this is ground and this is ground, because it's actually ground here. This isn't. It's not doing anything, so it's, it's floating essentially, so I need to tie both of those lots together. Then it should work. We're just having fun. Can't we just have some fun? Right. I'll put you in here for now. But then I'll replace you with the red wire it when I know this works. But it should work now, let's try it. Right, moment of truth. Nothing 
at all. Okay. Um, no idea. Let's try this. Oh, oh. Bit of jitter there, which means it's picking up a bit of noise from here, which means it's working. Now, if I do this, oh, look at that. I've replaced this wire with the wire that was there before. No. Now, if I rotate this, I've got a beautiful 180 degree rotation. I'm drawing about at 0.1 amps, 100 milliamps, a little over. The stall current is, if I hold this tight, oh, tighter than that. Half an amp. That's really pushing as well. Jeez. Yep. That's much more stronger than I need it to be. But the servos I'm going to use in the clock are going to be much smaller anyway. So that's handy. There's a bit of jitter from the potential motor down at the low end. That won't matter because the clock won't use that, that's just for testing this. Okay, so that's the basic structure of the program for moving the servo. I've got the input, I've got this going on here to scale that input to this output. And I've got that moving. So that works alright, that's about the range of motion I want from the servos for the clock. Next step will be programming two lots of servos and the truth table and everything else and getting them both mo moving in unison. That'll be next week when I actually buy the smaller servos for fitting in the clock itself. And then I can work out the exact angles everything else I need. Scale that to the angles that the servo needs to be and then put that into the, into the truth table. So that'll be next week, so stick around for that. That's all I've got for this week. Don't forget to subscribe so you keep up to date with what I'm doing. And we'll see you next week's video. Until then, I'll see you next time. Have a great week.